Hi, I'm Mike Stratton. Today we're going to be talking about supporting self-efficacy. It's one of the five strategies in motivational interviewing that helps address a person's ability to change and addresses where they are in terms of their stages of change. It's a really crucial skill to be able to learn. Self-efficacy actually is the belief that a person uh, knows that they can change, they believe it's possible for them to change. It really asks the question, is it possible for me to change? So we'll be addressing the person's belief about change, belief about their ideas, about how they would change, if it's possible for them to change, helping them to identify times in the past that they have changed, uh, their belief on how other people change, all of that. It really increases the possibility uh, increases the likelihood that they are going to be able to engage in specific behaviors. So, so today we're going to be meeting with Christy, and Christy has some health concerns. Her blood pressure is high. It's 143 over 102. Her cholesterol is also high. It's a 252. Uh, her HDL cholesterol is still it's in the good range. It's 41. And her glucose is good as well. It's 95. And that's in the good range. Her pulse is regular, uh, but she does have a family history of heart attacks and strokes. And she also has um, some difficulty with physical inactivity. So that's what we'll be addressing today. Hi. Are you Christy? I am. Christy, I'm Mike Stratton. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good to see you again. It's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah. It's been, uh, I, in fact, I think it's been since last year that we met last, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think okay. So. This is our. I believe it's our third meeting. How are you doing today? I'm. I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you. Uh, did you drive here? Take the bus? Did you walk? It's. A um, my sister brought me. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's nice. That's that's wonderful. So she she helps you out with some things and. Yeah. Supports well, yeah, you in some ways. Yeah. We're pretty close. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Beautiful day, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hate to jump right into this stuff, but I know that we, um, your time is probably very precious to you. And thank you so much for, you know, taking the time to come in. And it's important that, you, you know, enough for you to, that you made this trip. So let's talk a little bit about how it's been going with your health. Um, you, you had a chance to take a look at um, some of the information? Um, yeah, I looked at it. And how's, how's it been going? How's, how's your life been going? How's your health been going? I feel fine. Yeah. Well, that's great. I'm glad to hear that you're feeling fine. Um, do you feel any better today than you usually do, or is it pretty much the same as you have been feeling? No, I, um, I, I have back pain a lot. Um, uh. So I, I've been lifting my... Um, my grandchild around and oh. taking care of her over the weekend, so it's kind of, kind of hurting me today. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Is she? Uh, how old is she? Oh, she's one. She's one years old. Oh, that's great. Uh, do you have? Uh, how many grandchildren do you have? Two. Two. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. So they keep you busy. Yeah, they do. <laughs> okay. Okay. You clearly you like them. You like being with them. That you just kind of light up as you talk about them. Yeah. They're they're. Uh, they're very, very wonderful. That's terrific. Yep. That's fantastic. Oh, that's good to hear. Um, so I wanted to talk about your health. Obviously, that's why you came here, and you probably want to get back to your grandchildren. Um, we've set goals in the past, and um, I don't know if you'd brought your paperwork in or not, but we, I have a copy of what we had talked about a year ago. So I just noticed your reaction as I brought up the goals. It was so different because when you're talking about your grandchildren, you got this big smile on your face. And then when I said, let's talk about your health and your goals, you went, oh, it was just really hard. Yeah. yeah. You, you noticed that too. Um, we noticed a couple of changes, and I want to go over these with you. Some of it is really good news and, um, and some not as good. But let's take a look here. Let's um, look at the good side first. Uh, your glucose. We want to see that yours, yours is at 95, and you can see that that's still in the good range. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yep. And your HDL, um, that also, yours today is 41, and 41 puts you in the good range still, although it's a little lower than it had been in the past, but it's still, it's still good. So okay. there's some good things that you're doing still for your health. How do you feel about that? That's good. That's good. All right, so uh, your, your cholesterol 
is 252 and we want it to be below 200 so it's quite a bit higher than that it's in the high range and one of the things that we notice is that your family has a history of heart attacks and strokes and that's very likely to be correlated with that high history of cholesterol that your family has so on the one hand it's kind of normal this is what everyone in the family has and at the same time there's these consequences that have gone along with it which I mean there are people that you know that you've probably lost as a result of that is that true um, I haven't lost anybody but my grandfather um, had a stroke and it uh, caused him um, you know to lose a lot of his mobility um, he he can't mm. walk without a cane, and mm. now he can't drive, and and so that's been hard on him. Mm -hmm. And did he have high cholesterol as well? Um, I don't know if he did. Yeah. Not. Okay. Okay. And the other thing that is of concern is your blood pressure is in the it's it's 143 over 102, and as you notice right here, take a look. See that that number is very high in the high, high to very high range. You see that? Yep. And any thoughts about that or any reactions to that? Um, that, <laughs> that's kind of not, I don't know. It's been like that for a while, so yeah. I, I don't know. I guess it's just the way it is. And that's true. That is what you've known. That has been the way it's been, although it's even, it's, it's creeping up even higher, so that's, uh, of concern um, or I well let me check with you is it of concern to you at all are you a little worried about it or concerned about it well I hear about um, you know people talking about high blood pressure and um, you know they have commercials on TV about you know high blood pressure but um, you know I feel fine Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm, I'm not too concerned about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Well, may maybe we can change that. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> let's talk about that a little bit. So blood pressure is one of those things that you might notice. You might not even notice much yourself, but it can be really, uh, it can increase your risk for some heart attacks and strokes. Things that happened to your grandfather, how long ago did that happen? Uh, that was about um, four years ago, I think. Okay, okay. So what was that like for you to kind of witness what he went through? Oh, it was horrible. Um, it, you know, my grandma doesn't drive, uh, so, she, you know, she couldn't get anywhere. And, and my grandpa was, um, you know, depressed because he wasn't able to do the things that mm. he normally does. Yeah. And so that, it was, it was really hard to, to see them and, um, you know, the family had to kind of help them out and take them places and um, make sure that things got done. So, um, you know, people, people chipped in and uh, helped out as much as they could, but still, it's, it's still hard to see them, you know, just have to stay at home all the time. Yeah, I, that's, I, my sense is that it's really been difficult for you. It's really been weighing on you to kind of see what he's gone through yeah. um, and that sense of like if he could have done something different about his health maybe this could have been avoided yeah maybe uh -huh. um, yeah well, I never thought about that okay okay well let's have a conversation about that um, I wanted to ask you really Christy what, what do you think about the possibility of change do you think people change <laughs> um, People it's a, change. It's a funny question, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think that people can change, yes. Yeah, yeah you've, you've so. seen people change. I have seen people change. And they've done it, have they been able to avoid certain kind of outcomes when they change or if they change? Um, the change I'm thinking of is mostly like body weight or, right. um, you know, sometimes you, you get heavier as you get older or, you know, you're you get more wrinkles when yeah. you get older. <laughs> okay, okay. Like those kind of changes. There's all kinds of changes. There's good changes, there's bad changes. Uh, my hunch is that you've changed yourself over the course of some years. You've probably made some good changes yourself over different times in the past. Um, yeah, yeah, I have. 
um, made t some changes. Tell, tell me about those a little bit. Well, I had four kids. That was a good change. It's a big change. Yeah. 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 But but they're uh, they're wonderful. <laughs> 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 and you're still involved in their life, and that's that's a, a source of joy for you. And yeah, you're taking yep. care of grandkids now. Yep, yeah, most of the time. Sometimes it gets gets a little crazy. Uh, and my hunch is that you may have even made changes in being a mother. That there may have been changes you made, not just to have the children, but changes you made in terms of taking care of them or being there for them. Is that is that true? I would say that. As um, time went on, I was, you know, I got to learn a little bit more about being a mom, and um, you know that helped out mm -hmm. with um, my last two children, our twins, and oh, wow. so when I had them, it was a lot. I wasn't as nervous as I was when I had my first child. Mm -hmm. You said you learned a lot about being a mom. How did you go about doing that? How did that happen? Well, um, you know, I have um, four sisters, so you know they had kids, and I I learned how you know by talking to them, mm -hmm. and just by being a parent, you know, you try some stuff and it doesn't work, and and then you. You try something else and it might work. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. So let me connect this up with what we've been talking about with change and your health. Uh, one of the things that you're describing is that you've been able to change in the past. You've been able to uh, get help from people who've been able to support your change in terms of being a mom. And one of the things that you're looking at now is some changes in your health, some changes that you don't even notice, that if you didn't come in here and see the numbers yourself, you would have no idea that are happening, but that put you in a higher risk, a higher risk for having some bad health things happen, like have, like have happened with your grandfather or happened with other people in your family. And uh, that there may be some changes, some changes that you've identified that you want to make in the past that just haven't happened yet. And one is the physical activity. Um, let's talk about that a little bit. How's that been for you? Um, I, uh, to be honest with you, I, I really don't have time to go to a gym. I don't have the money to go mm. to a gym. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, I have some back problems, and my my back really hurts when I try to do too much. And I I've got to I got to work, so I've got to mm. um, make sure that you know I don't do something that's going to keep me from going to work. And um, mm. so I don't really think about exercise. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So it's not been something that's on your mind. And there are a lot of barriers in place to keep you from doing the kind. Because when you brought up a gym right away, I noticed that, that kind of like maybe in your ideal world, if you didn't work and you could join a gym and you could do that, all that would work out really well. Um, but in the real world, you're busy, you're working, you don't have the money for a gym, all those kinds of things. So, so there might even be some things that you can do short of joining a gym that might uh, increase your physical activity and have a and make a difference on some of these numbers that are going in a direction that were uh, that that could be risky. Um, can you imagine some things that you could do, or do you know of other people that get some kind of exercise that doesn't involve going to a gym? Mm, no, not really. Um, my sister that um, she and I are very close. Um, you know, she's in the same position that I am. She has three kids, mm. and um, you know, she's working two jobs. Mm. And uh, you know, we've talked about maybe going out for a walk or something like that. But by the time she gets home, um, she's not feeling like going for a walk and then another day I I don't feel like going for a walk mm. it's just okay. it's, it's too hard 
Okay. 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 That's really great information because you have someone in your life who could support your change and you want to support her change. It's just that you may have uh, kind of developed a kind of a conspiracy with each other that you talk each other out of it a little bit. <laughs> and, and maybe the shift is to help each other talk, talk each other into it rather than talk each other out of it. Yeah, I, I think that we kind of do talk each other out of it. I, I guess that's what you could say. But, you know, it, we're just we're just trying to do get done the stuff that we need to get done. Yeah. Okay, so let me see if I've got this straight then and tell me tell me if I'm on track with this or not. Um, on the one hand, you're describing like you don't really feel that much different um, than you felt in the past. There are some of these numbers here that are of concern. They do concern you? Do they concern you? Are they Yeah, I, I, I guess a little bit, yeah. Okay, okay. So, so you have some level of like heightened awareness and a little more concern about how it's going with your health. At the same time, you've tried some things in the past that haven't worked so well. You and your sister kind of get in cahoots with each other to talk each other out of walking together. But at the same time, it seems like that there's a possibility there of that being a real solution for you guys. Um, yeah, yeah. Um. I think, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, like I said, she, she's working and I'm working, and um, it, you, you have to take care of the family first. And there's the dilemma, because your family is so important to you, and you really want to be available to them, and you don't want to be uh, a victim of something that could happen, a stroke or a heart attack or something like what happened to your grandfather. Um, there's the dilemma that on the one hand you're so busy taking care of them that it's hard for you to find time to take care of yourself so that you'll be there for them. Is that is that a good way of putting that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. H yeah. Had, had you th I, thought about it that way before? I don't know. Um, I, I haven't really thought about it to be honest with you. I, yeah. I, I I feel fine. I um, yeah. You know, I I just mm -hmm. I feel fine. Yep, absolutely. And it's one of those tricky things. Blood pressure and cholesterol are things that you might not notice really, and they can just build up and build up. So um, so let me um, maybe uh, and I notice um, that a couple times you kind of glanced at your watch. You're looking to kind of get out of here probably pretty quickly, and. Um, uh, I know that you have, um, we, in the past, we've talked about different goals to set. And I'm wondering if one of your goals would be, well, what do you think? What, do, what, do, what would you like to do rather than me suggest it to you? If it kind of sounds like I should exercise. Um, so I guess that should be one of my goals is to exercise. And at the same time, that's a goal that we've set in the past that we haven't been successful with. But um, you, I think you've really found something that is a potential solution for you, and that is you and your sister helping each other with it and working on it together. And I wonder, I wonder if maybe one of the goals is to have a conversation with your sister. I can talk to her all the time. Oh, uh. great. Well, and talk to her about, look, we always talk each other out of this. Can we find a way to talk each other into it? I mean, I wonder if you write that down and actually take that to her and say, this is what I found. Let's, I, 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 I don't know. I'm just curious. You, you know what? And here's the other thing, Christy. This is absolutely your decision. It's, it's completely your decision whether to do this or not. It's up to you, and, and you're, you're the only one who can make this decision. And then you're the only one who lives with the consequences. So my goal would be to talk to my sister? Mm-hmm. Okay. which you do all the time already. <laughs> but it's a specific kind of conversation, and we find a way to talk each other into it. Yeah, I think we can do that. Yep. So let's write that down then. Or let's you write that down, because it's going to be your writing. I won't write it with you. Okay. To talk, talk to, to sister. my sister. Excellent. And what you want to do is to have the talk about talking each other into taking the walk instead of talking each other out of taking the walk.
Does that make sense? And, yeah. that's why, and that's why you're writing it down, because a lot of times it'll make sense in here, and then you go out of here, and it's like, what? What did okay. I say? Christy, that is so cool. That is so nice that you're able to make that kind of commitment today, and I know you have to get out of here right away. Um, one of the things, this is really good news, because in 30 days I'll be able to check in with you again and just see how that's going, how that conversation with your sister is going, because my sense is, you know, it is a lot that you have going on, and it would be important to have an ally, someone that could really help you to get out there and take the walk. And your sister wants to make the same changes herself. Um, you'd be helping her, helping yourself, and helping your family, helping these little grandkids so they don't have the experience of you that you've had of your own grandfather. So all that makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay, fantastic. It's so, so good to see you again today. I'm so glad we had a chance to have this talk. All right. You take care. I'll be talking to you in 30 days. Okay. All right. So let's wrap up what we just saw. Christy presented a different kind of challenge. She presented as more passive. Uh, her resistance was more along the lines of, uh, you know, I don't feel anything wrong. Uh, this is the way my family's always been. Uh, I'm overwhelmed by problems. It wasn't an argument. It wasn't a disagreement that was really hostile at all. Uh, it was more of a kind of a disengaged kind of sense. And how would she go about making changes? She was able to successfully answer each one of those questions in a positive way. And she herself identified, this is the person in my life who's likely to be my ally, my sister. However, she and her sister had developed this conspiracy to talk each other out of making a change. And I was wondering about the possibility of her having a conversation with her sister that would change that dynamic. There are many roads and many routes to get to supporting self-efficacy, but this was the one that Christy presented most clearly to me. So identifying past successes is really important. Getting a sense of the individual's model of change, whether they even believe change is possible or whether they are predestined to be this way. To find out what the costs are, and that's developing the discrepancy. Find out what the costs are of not making the change. There are people in their life that, they, that are meaningful to them who haven't been able to make these changes, and that's developing the discrepancy. And then being able to help her put it in her own hands, writing it out in her own words, uh, what that change is going to be. What we really have here is a collaboration between Christy and myself to help her make this change with some assistance and some editing by me. In conclusion, I hope you found this helpful and useful and something that you can use in conjunction with the other skills that we've been talking about in this series.